What's up, everybody? It's Joe LaPuma. You were listening. You were watching the Complex Sneakers podcast. As always, I'm with my guys. First off, to my right, Mr. Matt Welty. I wish we could have just like cut in 10 seconds earlier, but here we are. To my left, Mr. Brendan Dunn. Hello. How are we doing? I feel okay. I feel good, too. Another double header for the kid. It's we all good. We should bring it back to 10 seconds ago. Go ahead. Because we were talking about... Uh, Welty being out and about. He went to Emilio's he without had, us. He went to Emilio's. Well, <laughs> you went to Which Emilio's. I, went to Emilio's not a plan. Us. Oh. Not a not a planned evening. Now I know how you have felt, Joe. Also, because you were always the one who was on the outside looking in, other side of the glass, watching all. You, all the but fun you weren't on the outside looking in on that situation. This one. Oh, you're right. Because maybe Derek had said you had been invited to the function and you did, chose not to come. I wasn't. So you you were invited. <laughs> Wait, okay. hold on. Who okay. set the invite up? You? This you, is Emilio's the same Italian restaurant no. that Joe took us all to a few weeks, maybe a couple months what back. What had happened? Movie and PG. Yeah, let's hear what, what had happened. What happened was his good friend and alumni of the podcast, yes. Derek Curry, yep. sneaker politics fan. Friend to all of us. Was in town for some brand meetings or whatever. Mm-hmm. Hit up me and Dunn and was like, hey, I'm in town. Do you guys want to like just do whatever after? <laughs> Joe's okay, face ahead. right go now. Ahead. Ah. Go ahead. I'm creeping across. I said yes. I'm fine. I'm fine. I said yes. Mm-hmm. Brendan said he wasn't going to come out. I said I was. Because he has my back. Keep going. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, exactly. So, no, keep going. <laughs> exactly. We, we had met. It was. It brought back the energy. We had met in like some uh, one of those showrooms, you know, like the brand showrooms. I hadn't been in one of those in years. Wealthy was absolutely dreading it being in Soho on a Tuesday night. I'll tell you that. Anyways. How'd you get the res? Dude, let me explain it. Waiting. So we <laughs> we go we go out um, meet. He has a brand meeting. We have like mm-hmm. I don't know a drink or two, and then mm-hmm. we're like, hey, we're a little hungry. Like, want to get something? And we're in Soho, yeah. and we're in that area. And someone else that we were with, who used to work at Concepts, was like, hey, uh, do you guys want to go try to eat at Emilio's? And I'm like, I mean, and I said, you told him you're a veteran, a decorated veteran. I when said, it comes to Emilio's. no way, we're gonna get in. Yeah, right. And then they're like, no, you didn't they, think of calling Joe. They said, no, there's a table there. We have a table. We can get a table. So we walked in, but it was, you know where we had sat, like, in the main room in the corner? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Joe's the v- table. The VVIP table. I thought they were, like, <laughs> not playing us, but we were there. And I'm like, wait, where are we going? Because we had to, like, walk through the kitchen. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, is this, like, a joke? Oh, no, the other, it's the other yeah, side. Yeah, but there's, like, a back patio or something right. like that. So we got a table in the back. Did they bring out the Scarpiello wings or no? <laughs> no. How did you feel when you heard that he went to Emilio's without us? Or without you is more important. Not surprised. <laughs> should I, should I have been like, I should have been like Joe? Not surprised. Should have been like Joe. We're going to Emilio's in ten minutes. You want to? You're not allowed to go to any place that I introduce you to without me. Oh, just kidding. You're allowed. I feel and like Derek's if you threw up the bat obviously. signal, he would have showed up. But yeah, there was he, another one that he, I saw. He did the classic move where like he's midway through the meal, and that's when he texts me. But <laughs> it's all good. Listen, Emilio's is great. And go also, as, go R- as much as you want. Go R- with God. Whoa, Paul, Paul Sorvino. Yeah. Oh. We lost another legend. Okay. Tony Sirico. Tony Sirico. Tony Sirico Summer. Shout out Tony and Pete. Tony Sirico mm-hmm. Summer and Paul Servino just passed a couple couple days ago. Did it hit you hard? I'll tell you, I homaged him last night. Deep sigh. I made sausage and peppers and I peeled the garlic very thin. Yeah. That's a fact. Did you see our friend Al tweet something about He's cutting, cutting onions. the onions? <laughs> <laughs> this fucking Hold garlic. On. He bricked. He bricked yeah. the reference. Oh. Wow, that, I didn't see that. That reminds me. This is Al. who used to work here at Complex. He's worked at some other places. I think he's working for the NFL now. Yes, he is. Classic, out of touch, but trying to be in touch guy. And wait. I can say that because I love him. Uh, we we get, all get love a tweet him. off. Just to wait, get a tweet off. He, he, <laughs> he said chopping. Oh, no. no, I missed no, that. He said we're, he's like I we're cutting that. it. On, he's like, I'll be cutting onions in for <laughs> in my big honor. guy up in heaven, Big Paul. <laughs> this or something this like that. reminds me of years ago when he did an IG story on I think the 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 anniversary of uh, Notorious Big's uh, maybe his birthday or his death, and he said R.I.P. Biggs B I G G S. <laughs> well, like, at the weekend like concert, he had inflated it with it, Biggs Burt, you know, like <laughs> his IG stories at the weekend concert. He did MetLife Stadium, yeah. like the entrance of MetLife Stadium, mm-hmm. and just wrote Abel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah, the yeah. weekend, A B L E, like Abel <laughs> instead of the name. Shouts to Al. King it's okay. Abel. Trying his best. Getting I- ready for football season right around the corner. <laughs> yeah. Get those, get the the mishaps on yeah. social out now. Good. Yeah, get the errors out of your system. Uh, what's Can going we talk on? about another Paul? The Paul PG. Yeah. What about him? Because he went. To Carbone without you, Joe. I saw that. It's okay. Didn't he, ask you, didn't he ask you for nope. the hook on the resi? No. 
He never had the, the courage to ask you directly. He didn't ask me. He didn't. Because he was that. asking you kind of in a roundabout way, right? What putting in the IG story? Yeah, he knew that you wasn't directed to me. He also was trying to resell his uh, takeaway his takeaway bag. Was that a joke? Yes. Okay. <laughs> he said lightly used fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars carbone bag. Yeah, I saw that today. Do you have the <sighs> Kith carbone T-shirt, Joe? There's no doubt in my mind. Yeah. Have it. you worn it to carbone? No. Would you? No. <laughs> I didn't. Do you throw it on to whip up a, a mean uh, dish? No. Do you feel like when you get a little extra? When you're power? slicing onions? <laughs> no. No. I don't. How was your weekend? Uh, it was Any okay. cultural activities? It was actually pretty whack. Supposed to be in Florida for a family thing. Flight got canceled Saturday, so. Totally skipped it. You weren't going to hop on the Amtrak? You I couldn't. I couldn't. We wouldn't have made it in time. Mm -hmm. So, annoying. Flights are, are a mess right now. But, uh, yeah, so I just went to Long Island. Okay. Um, back in Bayshore? Back in Bayshore, yep. Multi? It was one of those weekends where you're like, I was outside mm -hmm. the weekend before. So you're like, I need to stay inside. Mm. Hot. It was hot. And it was hot. You took it easy. Did you guys lose power? No. no. I think like there you was lost like a, power. Well, so I guess it, like my section of Jersey City yesterday, yeah. like a, a whole strip had lost power, and I was in the office because we had shot yeah. full size run, which is out now with Bianca Belair, WWE Raw Women's Champion. Was your beep Go super on. beeper? I like, know. I, was I know. Say. I do you have a beeper for I, the no, super? No, 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 no. But I did <laughs> get uh, one I did get two way yeah, emergency. <laughs> I did one get one of the I, did, out? I did get hit asking if I could like. Because I'm the only one who has a key to the basement, saying if I could go down there and like look at the Did you? Yeah, flip the panel. breaker. Well, I had I was that's what I'm saying. I was here and I was like, hey, I can be home in like an hour and a half. Your Oof. professional life takes precedent over the safety and the comfort of your tenants. Yeah. Do you have a chief of staff? <laughs> just in case? Kind of, do you have a do you have a chief the, of staff? Somebody to delegate case? to. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's Second like there's like someone yeah. there's someone else in the building that like if I wasn't there, like if you had to be like, hey, can you like put this out or something like yeah. that? That could take care of it. But I'm the only one with the keys. To the basement. How hot was it yesterday? Yesterday wasn't as bad, was it? Or was it today not the one that wasn't as bad? <laughs> tell your tennis. Don't tell us. 80, 87 and the power was out for an hour and a half. All right. Do you want me to go home and fix it? Yeah, it? By the time I had gone home, it was already the power was already back on. It was out for an hour and a half. Okay. <laughs> you think some food went bad in some fridges or anything like that? Was this your first real test, though? No. What was your first real test Snowing, as a superintendent? Right? The first real test was when my next door neighbor's water heat. I think I explained it. The water heater broke. Did we hear about this? I don't know. If I and know like this. it ripped through. Like wow. It like ripped through. Like the, it was on the second floor, and just like all of a sudden, it was like you dripping. Slap some duct tape on there. No, you know it was dripping in the, the hallway, but like <laughs> completely like. But it also set off every single smoke alarm oh, man. in the building at once because it hit like a tripwire or something like that. Had, and you, you, had you trained for that? No, that I had no clue what I'm doing. And I'm like, it was like a panic attack set in and I had to like rip out every single smoke alarm <laughs> in the building, which was like 12 <laughs> of them. This To me, like the box jumps are almost training for that, right? Just working on your vertical. Dude, I had, the, I actually right had to the take, <laughs> I had to take the rogue box and flip it up to the 30 inch setting. You used your CrossFit equipment to rip out the smoke alarms? That's amazing. Yes. Wow, that's just being handy. I feel like we need that as a commercial for some noble sneakers or something. Yeah, like that. it was, dude. It was. I'll be honest with you. That was like that's scary. No, it was like it was just a stressful situation. Yeah. You know what I mean. So and I was just. It was it was a pain in the ass. But you but, learned how to handle the stress because yesterday yeah. while the power was out for an hour and a half and your whole building was cooking, you you weren't even thinking about it. Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking, flipping. You know, flipping yeah, skipping. I was thinking about. I was, I was thinking about flipping. Skip. I was thinking about giving. Everyone watching this, the content they've been so dying to see. Yeah. So, don't say I never did anything for it. The, okay. the content they've been dying to see, but we're just all like good. this, us, us talking about what fucking it, restaurant. The one thing that we and, should, the one thing we should talk about, the content they really want to hear is the story came out. And I know people hate hearing about things in the Slack, but we were reminiscing upon childhood era uh, high fructose corn syrup drinks, right? Yeah, yep. because the Choco Taco, Choco -taco, -taco yeah. continued. Yeah, and you know, I mentioned it. it, got, it I mentioned it. The watermelon roll also got discontinued this summer. But it, so we went, but we went down the beverage lane yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. We started talking about you know, Orangina, Fruitopia. Orangina, sips. I still have never had. I don't. I, I, don't, I have never had an yeah, orangina either. Sips about though. Sips. I, I threw in sips. Basically, Orangina is like it's like carbonated orange juice. And you were big on that. 
it's just one of those drinks that um you know because they're not going to serve you straight up soda mm -hmm. in uh high school or whatever there was like one soda machine on the far side in like yeah. a vocational school so it was like orange juice with carbonation so it kind of like skidded close the, enough yeah skidded the line of like not soda but kind of soda were y'all ever soby drinkers no remember the lizard yeah but it was that drink was trash yeah oh. but the, it was a cool logo the it. lizard the mascot he was um, in graphic design he was into the graphic design <laughs> the bottles but not, that's not, not the, yeah, but the, the one yeah, just what about looking. orbits remember orbits yes. with the little plastic yes. beads in it yeah, i never had those but it was always fun to look the that one was cool. you ever the, have joke cola yes yeah the one the one drink that we ended up uh reminiscing upon a bit was your mom or your grandmother making you the homemade iced tea loved with the it. powder? Oh, yeah, loved I, it. I can't plastic, relate to this, but y'all were yeah, talking in about the this. It was like in the plastic jar and like and it'd, it'd, the it'd be like a cooler cups. full of it. You'd yeah. go into the fridge so on like good a, too, really good. But Joe put it out there that he used to dry scoop the powder from the iced tea when he said he was feeling <laughs> a little uh, feel and a little you're reckless. Just eat it by the handful. Yeah, by the scoop. You would take the actual scoop oh. and just like put it on his tongue. It wasn't bad. It wasn't that bad. It's just it's a different kind Don't of sugar. Don't act like that's normal it's behavior. A, it's not normal behavior, but it's a different kind of sugar when you're young. And yeah, I would. Would you get in trouble for that behavior? No. No. Did your mom ever catch you? I mean, they knew it because I was bouncing off the walls. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, I, like, all over your yeah, I thought you, I thought like, you were going to say they knew it because there was like wet. You know how like that's the uh, the powder like crystallizes when it gets yeah, wet. Yeah, yeah. If there it's was like a wet scoop, but there yeah, was like a wet I, rim around the. Listen, just a summer, summer, a summer scoop. I used to call it a summer scoop. Summer and, scoop of and yeah, maybe, powdered iced tea. Maybe on those on those nights, I was a little more hyperactive than usual. Yeah, it was the focus you needed to get your pre-calc homework done. Exactly, way before that. But yeah, maybe long division. <laughs> <laughs> that actually just reminds me. That reminds me. This is somewhat related in terms of artificial flavor to 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 boost meals up. Um, we used to hang out at my friend Glenn's house after school, and his grandma was mostly running the show in that in that era. His mom was out doing whatever she was doing, okay. and uh, she used to make spaghetti with ketchup. No, um, the spaghetti was just ramen noodles packets without the ramen without the yeah. <laughs> without the flavoring mm -hmm. with <laughs> so butter. She, no, just just the noodles. She would just yeah. boil up the noodles, That's it? <laughs> and there was some cupboard in his house stashed with, you know, seventy eight ramen noodles flavored packets from over the years that were never used because she was always making noodles. Was it was did she like dub it ramen noodles or it was like oh you're having pasta? It was, it was pasta. It was like Ooh, spaghetti, no. quote unquote. And now <laughs> you're at Emilio's. Look at the progression. Wow, yeah. Not there as often as our friend Matt Welty, but I've been there once. And one one other beverage I want to mention that we did. Yeah, this is the content people are looking for. Yeah, um, definitely. Squeeze it. Yeah, squeeze it. An absolute classic. They had like the ad where it was like the boxer, you know? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. But just the, the feeling that that tactile sensation of twisting, of twisting the it. top off and then just just squeeze. It. Yeah, I, I I used to take one scoop of the uh, powdered sugar Back iced the tea and then scoop off and then uh, twist off the squeeze it's and sometimes I would just yank the squeeze it too too hard because I was I, I was You're that excited. sugar high. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you were you were doubling up. Yeah, no, jo I wasn't. Joe Joe was literally dusted. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. What an era, huh? Yeah. What a time. Now look, we're on a sneakers podcast. Thirteen minutes in, <laughs> haven't mentioned one, one sneaker. We didn't. We didn't talk about one shoe yet. No, not one. Should we give away a pair of shoes already? Or should we talk about the shoes we have on feet? Or should we, we should just talk keep about the shoes about... we have on feet, then Probably. give away the shoes, and then get into the okay? Look here it. For. There's okay. a runner show. What, what, people aren't here for this. What are you wearing, Wealthy? I love this. Uh, these are a shoe that I think, like most of us, you forget that you have in the stash, especially mm -hmm. when it's a little bit older. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot I had these. I've only worn these like twice. These I are, never knew you had these. Beautiful shoe. Did I? I think these are the Mita. Those are the root beer floats. MT 580s. <laughs> I think they're from like 2013, 2014, something like that. Really? Are they that late? Yeah, it's not um, one of the OG yeah. ones. I think this may this is one of the Revlite 580s. So it's oh, not, okay. It's not. Um, I had. No, I'm sorry. I keep interrupting you, but I didn't know that was a Revlite one. Yeah, but I think a lot of the Revlite shoes were very bad. I feel like. Yeah. But these are. I feel like eh, I'm okay with it. Okay. So. Social status penny ones. And you're doing two different colors. Yeah. So I'm playing around with the swooshes a little bit. A little arts and craftsy. Yeah. It comes with what, like four, Babs, four five different. Babs, get the close up in case you don't have. I wish you could. I don't. I don't know if the mic picked up on that, but you were ripping the the, the swoosh off the Velcro. Wait, who I did feel it like better? You hold this. Can you hold the shoe up to the mic so the listeners can get the real? Uh, Wait, who full did it better? 
Who? Who ripped the Velcro swoosh off the shoe better? Wait, what was the show yeah. or who? He, you don't remember? It's one of the most infamous moments of the show. Oh, yeah, the, the oh. dunks. The, the, <laughs> the canary the dunks, dunks. Where you're like... <laughs> there we go. Pretty good. That's that's about as satisfying as twisting the top off a of squeeze it, man. That's it. I info love on it. the socks, Joe? These are the left stone and hammer dyed socks. You didn't bring the dad socks? No. Shout dyed out. socks, not dad socks. Dad socks. These are lap stone and hammers dyed they died. Shout uh, out. Shouts to Brian. Shout out, Brian. Yeah, this was a this was a midday change because I call I said a double header at the beginning of this show. It's let me just say it's WWE week here at Complex. Little hint. Yeah. Bianca Belair will be out Friday. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then maybe Monday you may see some. All right. That's all I'm giving. All right. Live once. I'm doing my left. New Balance 993s. This is kind of my new version of the dirty Reebok workout uh, in terms of just a sneaker that I pull out every day. Okay. Um, You'll Listen, see he seems lot. very excited. He made sure, he made sure this week that he he thought about his choice. <laughs> no, <laughs> and just said he pulled out the everydays. It happens, you know what? And Come that's as you why are. Sixteen minutes in. Listen, I feel like it's good that we could have like a wide ranging topic podcast because we've been giving <laughs> you some serious sneaker talk some hits. the past few weeks. Yeah. So this isn't serious sneaker talk. No, this is all about childhood drinks and. Um... What we ate for dinner. New York City restaurants, not Shit still like not that. getting invited. Yeah. <laughs> but go binge, go binge the last few episodes. They've been bangers. Yeah. Humbly. As as will this one be, I have a feeling. Absolutely. Uh, should we give away some sneakers then? Now it's time. Okay. It's time. What is what is that? Bruce Buffer. Oh. Boxing, right? Oh. UFC. Sorry. So close. <laughs> I'm sorry. His brother. His brother. Michael actually, Buffer. Actually, they are, they're half brothers, and they didn't discover that they were like brothers until like later in life, I believe. And they had already gone down that professional road of being announcers? I'm not sure, but they both ended up in this, doing the same thing, which yeah. I think is just super fascinating. Incredible stuff. Every week here on the show, we give away a free pair of sneakers with the people at eBay Sneakers. You can enter to win a pair of sneakers by going to ebay.complex.com and submitting a question for us to respond to here on the air. If we pick your question, if we answer your question, if we address it, we are going to send you a free pair of sneakers courtesy of the good people at eBay and their sneakers authenticity guarantee program. Only open to U.S. residents. I think we have a pair of Nike SB Dunks here today. Ooh, yes, we do. We've been doing a lot of Dunks lately, right? Yeah, might as well. This is a... This is a nostalgic shoe for me. I'm, I I'm, hear I'm happy it. we're giving this one. I want to hear today. all about it. Okay. Should we should we say who they're going to first? Yeah, or do you want to hear my story? Okay. Absolutely. I've probably told the story about these before. Yeah. This week's eBay sneaker question of the week comes from John McChesney, Lexington, Kentucky. Shouts to Joe. Joe from Oneness. Oneness. Yes. Jack Harlow. Jack also. Harlow. Yep. What was the first sneaker you saved up money for? How could we remember that? Actually, you remember it? No, no, no. To correct, because someone actually gave a shit for that once. What? Jack Harlow is not from Lexington, Kentucky. Louisville. He's from Louisville. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I've never been to Kentucky. Okay. I'm sorry. We said that on here, or I, I probably think said so. It. I think we had Louisville. mentioned it yeah. once in someone. We got the L's mixed up. Couple Dave Matthews. Of L's. Good thing Dave Matthews is not in studio. We'll make a note of that. But do you want to tell your story first? Do we want to answer the question first? Whatever. I don't want to be selfish. Can we say the question, or we already did? It. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Got Emilio's on the brain? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right. Let me, let me talk about question. this shoe. Yeah, this I want to hear sneaker this we're giving away. Nike SB Dunk Low, green Tokyo Taxi. Remember the blue pair as well? Yeah, blue pair better than kinda the green like the... pair. But... <laughs> you think so? I think so. Personally, it's I remember, like I remember both blue, of those right? shoes, and I remember being, I wanting the blue pair more than the green. Go this Ducks. important. Thank you. eBay. Yeah, it is kind of a low-key Ducks colorway, right? Yeah. I, I think it's a high-key Ducks colorway. Okay, we'll take that. We are giving these away. This is a nostalgic sneaker for me. This is from the era when we first got into dunks in high school, I feel like. 06. All my friends and me just just trying to buy whatever we could. And I remember my friend Adam Holbert, one of my dearest friends. I was the best man at his wedding, actually. Wow. I, you know, I'm often the best man at a wedding. Okay. You uh, gave a good speech? Is that a question? Did, did you? That's not a question. Okay. You know I did. Um, he had a pair of these for so long that got so destroyed that all the stuffing was coming out of the collar. And eventually there was a family of spiders living in there. You know, because it's a, <laughs> That's it's disgusting. Was he skating them? No. Um, no, I don't think Adam ever really skated like that. But definitely took him 
up and down mountains, across continents. And I imagine like, like that. every single person's house that he visits, he like drops off an infestation. Oh, like a, wow. It's like a bug in their like, wow. apartment. Would you let him into the apartment complex if no. he came through? <laughs> <laughs> a strange okay. super if there ever was one. Okay. It's where you draw the line. It's hour like and a half, no it's like, power. It's like the next things you know, you have like bed bugs or something in the apartment whoa, from whoa, a shoot. Whoa. I'm kidding. Okay, go ahead. So that is that is what I, you know, the person getting these sneakers from eBay, they're getting a brand new DS pair. But the vision of them in my mind will always be with a corroded innard and a spider. Do those come with the... I'm not sure if both pairs come with the gloves. Is it just a blue pair, or did, did both pairs come with the gloves? I'm, I don't remember. Well, but they, there Adam, was a please let us know. It came with the the driving gloves. Yeah, yeah, because it's inspired by taxis was, was in there Tokyo. Th wasn't there a third pair? Um, I think there was. There was a third pair I of think Tokyo there was taxi too. dunks? I think there was, no, I think there was the green dunks, right? well, there blue was that. dunks, so and I want to say there was a black and yellow Nike SB Team Edition wow. that was also part of the pack. That'll he boy. went deep. I, I love think that. so. That a boy. Deeper than a family of spiders. I tip, I can my, still I tip, remember I tip like, my hat to you. I can still remember like where I was, like being in the skate shop. Where were Same. you? Same. I passed, on, I that passed on those, but it was one. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, 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 no. no. Uh, but you brought up skate shops. Definitely in the skate shop. You remember like seeing it on the wall. Probably going like this. Scratching your chin. Trying to put the fit together in your mind. I ultimately passed, but mm -hmm. it was a close but one But also like you, you, you didn't want to like... I remember back then you kind of had to decide which shoe you wanted first because at least for me, I'd always get you'd get your hopes up that you wanted the one shoe, but like the odds of them actually still having that shoe in your size were like a, a dice roll. The one shoe not being this one being a better Nike SB Dunk, or just in general, time. like if you were like, hey, do I want this one? But then you didn't even want to ask for it. Sometimes you didn't want to ask for because it because they'd be like, are you kidding? They don't have them in the size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then a lot of them did, and it was like you know you always hear. Oh, we used to love when we would go into a store mm -hmm. and they were, but the skate shops like around this era yeah. still had that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Just like the J, the J rod where it was in the window. I was like, there's no way that there's a jump man on the tongue of that P rod and it's still in my size. And I walked in and they had it. it. Was. This, this was like still right around there. Now you're saying this wasn't good enough for you. For me, it was always like, they're always like, are you kidding me? We only have a size eight left. Damn, you know, just like, sunning it. Kick rocks. <laughs> Not kick rocks, but you just like. Yeah, you felt a little like foolish even asking that you would think that they would still have it, you know? Yeah, I know what you mean. So the Those eBay the question was the first sneaker you saved up money to get. Yeah, I don't remember my first. I don't remember my actual first. You never forget the first. That's also true. I don't remember my first, but I do remember stashing money away for a pair that I really wanted. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a one to one stash away. There were some complications. Was this the Jordan 17? <laughs> yeah, so I told it. Yeah. Is it okay if I tell it again? Yeah, I mean, if it's the if it's the answer. We got a lot of episodes. People haven't necessarily heard it. We're going to see Dave Matthews in Pennsylvania. Dave Matthews Band. Not, Not the, producer. the producer of Complex Sneakers. Not podcast. the producer. Shout full, out to Nick, too. Full circle moment. And I had a Sprint flip phone. It was right around when the internet, like you could go on the internet on the phone. Mm -hmm. And... I was like, wow, I could like... Where were you, What were the websites you were frequenting? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I definitely told this story before. Long story short... It's a good I, story. Texting I, the girlfriend at the time? Yeah. Well, to could tell Long it for you right short, now. Long story short, it was back in the day when the texting counted as like internet. It wasn't unlimited texting. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. had to like log on the internet and then you could text. And Joe, Mr. Won't Divulge His Screen Time, La Puma. Was on there heavy. Yeah. Five hours of texting on the way there. Mm-hmm. And I think I even like took a nap for an hour and left the internet on. The phone bill was eight hundred dollars, and it was around the same, in the same like span of two weeks when the Jordan Seventeens, the white and reds, because I got the white and blue, and I think I got the black, but the white and reds, <laughs> the white and reds. I was working at finish line at the time, and I remember. Of course you were. I remember the <laughs> phone bill was crazy, and like my parents had to help out. Yeah. With the phone bill at that time. Did you steal mon money from your mother? I took it. I took it back. So, <laughs> what do you mean you took it back? Well, I was. <laughs> my parents said you have to pay me back for the phone bill. Eight hundred dollars. And I was like, every check hundred here, three hundred yeah, here. Garnish. And then the white and red seventeens came out, and I took the money back to get to get. You know, in some countries they'll cut your hand off for that. <laughs> you parents? took the money out of no, the. For I remember for stealing, it was right in, for stealing. It was right in the cabinet. Exactly right in the cabinet. Did it take you a while to get to the point of you're like, I'm going to steal from my parents in order to afford these shoes, or but you just knew that it had to happen? It wasn't stealing from my parents. It was stealing from 
paying back. You're like, you're like stealing some, back the money that was already mine. Yes, yes. <laughs> that I knew I would pay the back. Robin Hood shit. The levels, it was a total loan shark. The levels of <laughs> loan shark uh, the situation. Level, the levels loan of like mental Puma? gymnastics that you're going through to justify the fact that you stole, stole money from, from your parents. Yeah. But it's you guys are painting it out like I went into the pocketbook. I didn't. I but did was, you tell your mom you were taking the money? No, but I was so taking. You stole it. No, but I was taking the money <laughs> from my check and putting it. I was like, oh yeah, I'm putting it. It's not like they were waiting. He was counting. absconding with the goods like a younger Joe LaPuma dipping into the sweet tea powder. And then, and then they found out. And what was the punishment? I didn't return the shoes. <laughs> no hair gel for three day. months. Wasn't a good day, huh? <laughs> no, sorry. No what? <laughs> no hair gel for three months. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but I just remember. Did, I, rem did the I remember being like, "I'm gonna get in trouble," but they're gonna sell out. I did need the, them. Did the, so <laughs> did the sauce? Did the sauce spoon make a? No, no. Make a the wooden they, spoon. They, yeah. they no. all up to you with the spoon. Did they no. used to dish the gravy no. out. But that that was one where I remember, and I only remember that because I just remember like a roll of cash hit like and bring. You knew the exactly cash. where it was. Yeah, and hit it, and and I was doing it. Like they trusted me that I was gonna do it. They probably. Should, Shouldn't have, but like that I was going to keep adding and adding to the pot. And then I took, yeah, I took like what? It must have been with the discount 200 something Did back. you pay that money back? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's why I could talk about it now, but I just remember. <laughs> That's why you could talk about it now. <laughs> like it's a Is that bad? Is it bad? I would have never done that. Would you have left the phone on? I had a similar experience like that where I think it was. It was around the time when my little brother first had a phone, probably 2008, and I had come back from Europe. Oh, well traveled. <laughs> yeah, I was going to Dave Matthews Band in Pennsylvania. <laughs> You're going from Europe, all right? And there was a young woman who I wanted to be in frequent contact with okay. at the time. Similar situation. Yeah, and. I definitely just was texting her all the time for my little brother's phone because I didn't have a phone yet. You know, I hadn't owned a cell phone at that point and definitely racked up some serious charges. That's what happened. I thought you were gonna say like, luckily you grew up in an area that didn't have like frequent cell service, so you couldn't. Have <laughs> he, phone likes just add on, he likes to add on. He likes to add on the story and. Try. I mean, definitely it was it, cell service was hard to come by. Yeah. But yeah, I paid the money back, so it's all good. Good. And shoes? I got the white and red 17s. Good, good, good. Shoe. I think the shoe that I first saved up for, and I've think mentioned these on here before, and I, I wish I could find back in my email. I still have emails from decades ago how much I paid, but it was this pair of Era SB Dunks, Nike SB Dunk yeah. Low, that turned out to be fake when um, yeah. there was a store in Spokane, Washington. That, it was like the first resale shop at the time. And the the guy, you know, he's like, you guys ever heard of Flight Club? And we we're like, oh, what's mm -hmm. that? You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of my first exposure to things like that. And is that why you hate Spokane, Washington so much? No, there's plenty of reasons to hate Spokane, Washington. <laughs> hey. Summertime in the 509 is not one of them. Classic song. Same with Hoops Fest. Um, I remember going to the shop for the first time and he had a bunch of Air Force Ones and that was really cool. I got one of the Philly pairs of Air Force Ones, but I wanted a pair of SB Dunks and that was a, a big deal to me to be able to get when I said, what about this pair? Can you help me find this pair? And he said, yeah, but you know, it's going to cost some money. And yeah, I think maybe he charged me like 250 or $300, which back then was it's yeah, a lot. huge amount. And I just always had this sneaking suspicion that they were fake and eventually kind of just came to the conclusion myself that, that they were. But, but you saved up for them. Yeah, I didn't steal from my fucking parents. How much were you putting aside each? I... Day? I really don't know. You didn't take out of the pot of gold for the shoes? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I did eventually replace them, though, with a real pair, just, just so that people know about my resume. Welty, what about you? What was the first pair of sneakers you saved uh, up for? The first thing I ever saved up for, I remember, it wasn't a pair of sneakers. It was a pair of Tommy Hilfiger Carpenter jeans. But okay, with the little thing on it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was um, the, the hammer, for the hammer right? Yeah. yeah. You had uh, the hammer on you? <laughs> no. Um, the that little was hoop? A, that was the first thing, but I would say probably like the first thing was like, I think the first time I had to like purchase my own shoes was probably like when I was like 18, mm -hmm. 19, like right out of high school. Like my mm -hmm. parents said, like, we're not buying you. Or I wanted yeah. more shoes than like cool the, shoes too. Yeah. 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 Or like more than the just the getting the shoes at the start of the year, you know, yeah. Christmas, maybe summertime, you know, like the traditional like spots where you'd get a pair of shoes. I think it was, um, just going to like the finish line in the mall. There was a foot. There was always a Foot Locker there. That's the one I used to work at. But there was a brief period where there was also a finish line mm -hmm. in the mall, and finish line carried different stuff. 
mm-hmm. than Foot Locker. And I think I bought like a pair of like early like Adidas ZX shoes and a pair of Stan Smiths. That was like about it. Nothing super crazy, but you were stashing away in the piggy bank for a long time for that one. Uh, I th- no, I think I just actually had a job and could just actually. What was the job? Uh, working at a gas station. It wasn't okay. Too, uh, it wasn't too. Uh, you were pumping gas or what? No. Um, you were it, flipping over the jalapeno poppers under the heat lamp once they were ready. Wow. <laughs> no, in, uh, in New Hampshire. Let's it's, get the other side of this hot dog all brown. New Hampshire's, one of, guy. New Hampshire's one of those uh, states where you can self-service at the pump, so you don't. Really, oh, sure. You don't have to pump gas. Like most states. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. But not New Jersey and Oregon. Oh, interesting enough. Uh, what were you doing at the gas station? This is what people want to know. Yeah, more so, more so. It was more so just being like a convenience store cashier, selling like, scratchets. Yeah, scratch off cigarettes, beer, all that stuff. Were you blowing a bunch of your checks on the scratchets? No, <laughs> no. I've never, I've never been a big gambling guy. Never been a big uh, scratch off person. Joe, gambling scratchets? No. I love me some fucking Do scratches. You? Yeah. Walk around with like I know you got like the button up shirt right now. Do you ever walk around you with big... like them in the pocket? <laughs> yeah. <are laughs> That'd you... be cool, right? Are, are you a, a cool big little... scratch scratch it gift giver? Like no, happy birthday, wealthy no. years. I should, right? Is, is that like a is that considered an acceptable gift? If that's the only thing you give someone because people do that because some people could hit big, but also it could just be like nothing, and it's like wow, thanks. Yeah, that's no Stan Smith autograph card, that's for yeah. sure. And it wasn't even an occasion when you gave that to Wilton. I know. Other no than worries. being a couple weeks removed from my birthday. Still, I'm still waiting on, on yours. I have a question just to put a pin in the parent situation. Uh-huh. How many New Balance 623s do I have to buy my dad to write that? Uh, Jordan, <laughs> <laughs> Jordan White and Red 17. You're going to have to max out the Kirkland card, baby. <laughs> you're going to have you're gonna have to have a Spenko already preloaded. In no, the, because I'm up to boy. at least four or five. Yeah. And a Monarch you bought that your he couldn't wear. sneakers? Yes. Mom, Stan Smith. Uh-huh. Dad, New Balance 623. Does he know that exact model and like that's exactly what he wants now? When I tell you the only, I tried to yeah. get him the Monarchs. Mm-hmm. And I also tried to get him the, what was like the cool Monarch? Yeah, yeah. The Martine the, Rose? No, no. No, the, 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 <laughs> like, no. no. The M2K. Yes. Techno. Oh, yeah, M2K. Couldn't techno. wear them and it was only New Balance 623. Mm-hmm. And now they're doing like a gray suede colorway, a navy blue. He just undies the navy blue one. So this he's weekend. into the different colorways? He's into the different colorways. Didn't it, didn't it catch you guys all off guard like that brief moment when like wearing the white and navy monarchs became like unironically cool or whatever? They did Pete Carroll's special makeup. Yeah, they, I, still I know, see I know. That a little bit. No, I still no, but there was like that like yeah. 2017, 2018 yeah. like period where like people were actually just like wearing monarchs like not yeah whatever yeah it was unsettling for me definitely i don't like that i think i remember i think that shoe belongs to a certain demographic you know i think at one point remember i and i don't this isn't shade but remember that one point we (laughs) had like no it is no no no, we had that program where it was like an nfl player was like our intern Mm -hmm. at the office yeah yeah tony buis Really good friend. So when Brennan Scarlett was our intern yes. for, I think, a summer, he was with the Texans. Now I think he's with the Dolphins. Yeah. Shouts to Brennan. Yes. And he came in because he wore, like, size, like, 15 sneakers or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that was the period where, like, Monarchs had, like, become cool or whatever. Yeah. And this guy sitting next to me in the office wearing size 15 Monarchs for someone you would <laughs> never expect for e to wear, like, the white Navy Monarchs yeah. with, like, skinny jeans, like, rolled up at the ankle. And I'm just like, wow, people are really doing this? Right yeah. now, and I guess they were, so. Random question. Do you know what the 623 model is without looking at it? I'm pretty sure I know. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. I think I know who designed that, actually. Really? Yeah, I think this guy, Jonathan Bacon, who worked on the 992. I will wow. double check that. I interviewed him a while ago. Pretty good. Well, do you ever buy your parents' sneakers? Uh, yeah, all the time. Really? Damn, I gotta, am I fucking up? I used to buy my mom's shoes, especially when I worked at Foot Locker, uh-huh. like, all the time. Like whatever, like the top end, like like Air Max 2009s, That's cool. like multiple pairs. And like, she was into them? Uh, yeah, like Asics, like Kayanos, all that stuff, man. You know what another thing I want to talk about? How native shoes have cornered the kids' market. Native shoes? Do you know those shoes? Yeah. yeah. Travi McCoy wore a pair on a... Uh... It's a specific model. Okay. Pair with, like the holes in them. Yes. I haven't heard anybody talk about natives for a Remember while. Remember, Travi wore the boots on full Listen, size Long Island. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Young kids, that's all they wear. Well, I mean, the whole foam shoes is like the thing now, right? I'm trying to find if they I'm can interested did to do see those. like what they do in sales. I mean, they probably make every a lot of single money. kid has them. I'm trying to find my guys, my guys' resume. We're all over the place right now. That's okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
These right here. The kids. His name is Jonathan Bacon. I just don't yes. know which of his new phones. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? All kids, over. Kid, kid tested, mother approved? <laughs> yeah. I had no idea. All right, so listen. Jonathan McChesney. Mm -hmm. Getting great pair. Yep. Great story. Check them for spiders. No, yeah. just kidding. If they came from eBay, you don't Ho have to worry about that. <laughs> Hopefully you have better luck than Dunn's friend. They hit him with Adam. a can of raid before you... <laughs> <laughs> Some other sneaker news. Okay. Other than your dad's <laughs> New Balance collection. <laughs> yeah. Those Travis Lowe's moving. Did you get a pair? I didn't get a pair. Did I you want a pair? Were you asking? Nope. I didn't you didn't ask. call in any favors? No, I didn't. That shoe was hotly debated within our coworkers. It's store. a really good shoe, though. Yeah. And it's where do we, you know, I think we did a, a couple months ago, we did the best and worst Travis Scotts, but I feel like this or is just, in, Or just ranking the Travis Scotts. Yeah. You know? yeah. But um, I feel like this is in the upper echelon of Travis Scott. I, I th did you do that on purpose? No, I didn't. I didn't. I think it's just tough. <laughs> I think. Don't even ask me how. I didn't, though. Wow. I think it's tough to, like, really figure out, like, where the shoe lies within Travis's sneaker legacy at least at this yeah. point right like the shoe Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 low reverse mocha yes because the shoe just released yeah the past week you know most people who probably hit don't even have their pairs yet mm -hmm. you know so we're trying to rank where does the shoe stand in Travis's catalog mm -hmm. right obviously Travis has done a lot of shoes that had a lot of impact on the sneaker space and some shoes that didn't have any impact right but a lot of those shoes, like especially with Travis going away for a while, mm -hmm. you know, have had their time to kind of like sit in and sink, and you know exactly what those shoes mean to like. Yeah, a few not years just, later, not just Travis's like legacy, but just sneakers in general, right? Mm -hmm. Like w what their impact was, like where, like say, like a shoe, two shoes drop, right? Let's say like the highs and the lows drop or something like that, and you're like, it's been long enough where you've been able to suss out for the most part, like. Which one is the more like coveted of? Yeah, which one has more staying power? Yeah, but when the shoe just came out, and people are like, "Oh, I really like this one," but it's only been a week since it's been released. Is it really like? Can you? Really... You're hesitant to say that it's like the best. I'm, just, I'm not, I'm not saying. I guess because not... it's a Jordan One Low. It Jordan One Lows suck. Right? But I'm not. No, because I like oh, no. the Travis yeah, that's Jordan right. One that's Lows. Right, but it's just hard to say what the shoe's final impact is at this. point. Mm -hmm. It would be like, you know, you're rate, rating an, an artist catalog and the new album comes out. And you're like, oh, I really love this album the mm -hmm. first week you heard it. But then a year later, you're like, dude, I don't listen to it anymore. Mm -hmm. Don't but, you think this one feels a little different, though? I, I do think it feels a little different. I think, like, these are universally really liked. Yeah. Clean I feel like there's way, less people Jordan who don't one. like them than other, other Travis. I mean, like, even something like the... Hiroshi Fuji, you know, the fragment, yeah. Travis Jordan ones were like, to me, the high was kind of a miss, the low was cool, and, you know, people had their opinions about that. The, but. the only, I think it's a good shoe, but the only thing I can take away from it is that it feels very much on trend. Okay. Like, where Travis had set all the trends, mm -hmm. this one feels more like... A reaction? Like what? A dunk? Well, like... The dunk, but also, like, the whole, like, vintage like, uh, distressed... Oh, in terms of the kind of off-white not yeah. not the brand but the color like yeah. sail yellow pieces on the shoe yeah i don't know i don't i don't really see that it feels like a travis shoe you know the browns and the tans and stuff yeah. like that it, there's just something about it that like makes me think like when you look at all those like people on ig who kind of like i don't know who like recreate shoes and whatnot like this is something that i wouldn't be surprised if they had like oh people who are building their own shoes or doing the faux vintage thing you feel yeah. like this looks like a product of that yeah. More than a product of Travis. Cactus Jack Enterprises. Yeah. I feel like these feel bigger, though. And I don't think it's recency bias. They do feel bigger, to your point, than the Fragment Lows. And I think really? that. Yeah, I think so. I Maybe it's because everyone just tried to get them. And it, again, it's fresh in our mind. But I don't know. I feel like this is this is a shoe that you don't hear many, like, these aren't good. Not a lot of doubters. Yeah. It's just like I think because we were trying to debate it a bit in like the one shoe that like we were debating against, which is I don't know. It's so tough because I personally like them, but like the fours. See, I I I didn't ch chime in in that debate. I think the fours are great. I'm not that big on the Travis. I just think the feels like fours. feels the blue, like the, blue, the Oilers color. Yeah, like our yeah. colleagues said that they didn't age well. I think they aged fine. I think that shoe. I like that shoe. I and we had Paul Wall on 
full size run. And I'm not like taking this into account, but when I heard Paul Wall say like why that was an awesome Yeah, that means something for sure. It kind of swayed me a little bit where I'm like, there's a little more like behind this, like him doing the Oilers colorway. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that you're like, oh, we're only ranking the shoes that came out to the public. Mm -hmm. But I do think that Travis Scott doing the four had some sort of impact on that moment in sneakers when like the Jordan four became like the biggest flex shoe like a lot of friends mm. and family pairs but that whole era of like you see like offset or quavo wearing like uh marquette or georgetown mm-hmm. like, oh okay that's true special makeups okay. like but the four became like i know there were a lot of fours yeah in the mix but i feel like travis's impact on the four definitely mm. pushed that needle a little yeah. more too. i guess one thing i'll say for that colorway is that it's one of the few ones in travis scott's nike or jordan work that actually has a theme to it or some type of distinct it's not just a vibe. inspiration <laughs> yeah you know it's like oh there's a historical connection that the shoe is inspired by and I also think someone said, oh, well, the friends and family took away from the general release. Now, I do... For the fours? Yeah, the okay. the, the Oilers ones. Yeah. I do get that the friends and family ones are really, really strong, but I don't think it took away from that four in, from my eyes. Being in a my strong, eyes. Like, like, general release. Yeah. yeah. And so it was also... The thing you had to give that shoe, I think, too, was the fact that it was a, before... No all, pun intended. Like, all the other shoes, for the most part. What do you mean? Like all the other Jordans. All the other Travis Scott Jordans? Yeah. Wasn't that the first one that released? If you say so. I I don't remember. I think that was his first one, right? Yeah. Okay. Check that. So it's like that's the one that like when that shoe came out. But it's weird because it's so different in a way people were like the rest of his jordan people were like weren't sure how they felt about that shoe when it first released because like for a while you could get that shoe for like kind of cheap yeah yeah, yeah. three four hundred dollars definitely but then it kind of i think it kind of like skyrocketed a, a little bit yeah because people were like oh shit travis scott jordans are a thing yeah because i remember that was very early on in the full size run days remember when trinidad had gotten a pair from stock x or it took forever to shoot there was some sort of snap forever because he didn't buy it from ebay ebay yeah yeah there was some sort of snafu behind him buying that shoe and getting all that frustrated but... <laughs> no, I, I didn't remember that detail sources said to you 2.4 million entries yeah one source close to travis scott's team i don't i don't know what to do with that information yeah it's hard to gauge it, you don't know like so say uh you get like people get a sneakers notification on anything you know what i mean like air jordan one or panda yeah whatever yada 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 dropping how many people do you think are hitting that raffle to enter on it tough to say it's tough to say but you would expect that a lot just a lot of people like who don't even have intentions of buying the shoe it's just anything sneakers related pops up on their phone you're hitting enter so yeah you'd have to go back and look at the user base size for sneakers which we've published some of that data before but nike never really makes it public and then kind of how much engagement there is and they talk about how much demand percentage they serve in the app we have some of those figures i can't remember them off the top of my head but it wouldn't surprise me if like there were semi-similar numbers for just yeah for sure any random sneakers drop yeah it's not like oh twenty thousand people entered for a sneakers drop you yeah, know like no i don't think that's ever happening you mentioned the panda dunks yeah you brought the up the panda dunks are, are we past the panda hate i, wh- I hope what so. is it what is it i don't understand it i don't understand it either because you know why it's a good-looking sneaker. And it's such a basic... St- like, that's the point of the shoe. It's a black-and-white like, Nike Dunk Low. How could you ever be mad at there well, being a million I'm glad pairs, you said that I, because it reminds of me of, black like, and white Nike Dunk Lows. a black-and-white Cortez that you would wear. I'm, like, not, I'm not saying that... I think the whole thing is that there's no hate on the shoe itself if the shoe existed within a vacuum. Okay. But it's more so people feel like what the shoe, like, represents within... Which is what? Sneaker space. Where it's like the... You know, it's that you it, see so many of them. It's just like it's the next shoe to the dirty white Air Force One. You know what I mean? I don't like, know if I agree. Keep in mind, my girlfriend does have a beat pair, so watch out. And <laughs> I don't agree. I don't agree with that because they're not worn really beat a lot to me. I'm not. It's just a color. It's just like people hating on the. Also, c- it's not as sacrilegious to me. Like the white on white Air Force One is a thing where you keep it so clean and it's supposed to no, be no, so no, clean. No, no, the, the no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not exist saying the space. shoe being. But do you beat. feel on the other side? I mean, I mean culturally, like, oh, like, like rinsed. Yes. Yeah. I just feel like it's a perfect gr. Like, goes with anything, and this hate. Because it's been so widely released and it keeps restocking is just weird to but me. But it's become like the sneaker culture shoe for like people who aren't into sneaker culture. 
I mean, for people who want, an, but I don't uh, know if they're they're saying they're into sneaker culture by wearing they're it. Not, you know but what it, I mean? But there's just like it's become like the de facto shoe to a lot of people. That's where I feel like a lot of the hate stems for the shoe. To me, I look at it like a totally fine shoe to wear, and also like Do you have if a you, pair. I don't have a pair. It's a little little white for me, but too much white. But also like I feel like if it, if I had to gift someone, we always talk about like yeah. oh what's. That would be the perfect shoe like to gift. Here, it's a little obvious sometimes. Is that safe to yes, say? Yes, for sure. Like, it, with all due respect, and this is not a shot at all, so don't take it this way. But when you had Finn on sneaker shopping, and he's like, "I don't know what shoe to buy," and then the girl working at the shop's like, "You should buy Panda Dunks," you know. And it was like, "Yeah, sure, I'll buy those," you know. And it, it, I like how he said, "No disrespect to you," and I'm, I'm not. Said my I'm not. Has a no, pair. no, no, like, it's no, yeah. me. it's no shop, but it's just <laughs> it like the. It's like the. You, Oh, of course. Like, there's no, like, thought into, like, which shoes do you really like? You just like the black and white dunk. But isn't that refreshing? Yeah. Isn't that, I isn't there so. some sort of refreshing where That's it's, like, got so many this, the that, story, so many rare secrets, collabs, yeah. this, that, and we're, we a all do it. Shoe. But, like, isn't it refreshing to maybe not have to always think, and it's, like, a total, I love shoes like that, total, like, the one, The one suitable, thing that I wouldn't say, answer. like, Ruined it for me, but our good friend Tommy Battle. This was like a year plus ago. What a but he had made a comment where he said, "This shoe is Fisher Price, my first dunks." Oof. Shout to Tommy. Yeah. He's killing it, by the way. Yeah. Not sure I agree with that, but shout to Tommy. You see I mean, the photos he's, he's taking. Kind of. I'm not mad at that comment. But I like it for that. That's what I'm saying. I like it for that. People can have an entry point. You know, it doesn't have to be the. Because the thing is, like, I feel like you would I love be it. not. I don't want to. I don't want to necessarily paint you in this way, but I feel like you might be upset if you saw that somebody's first pair of dunks was the super limited Travis Scott that's true. PlayStation. You know, it's like how that's can, true. Can, where, where do I, people? I just, where are they on. allowed to connect? That's true. Can I just clarify? I'm not like someone who's out there like getting super worked up about Panda Dunks. Okay. You pose the question of why people are yeah, upset yeah, yeah. about this shoe. That's also true. And I'm literally saying to you, I'm not putting this out there, but there's a lot of people who are just like, oh, that's like the suburban white girls yeah. wearing the shoe and just rinsing it to the ground. That's where like a lot of people see, it seems at least their frustration from the Panda Dunk comes within sneaker culture where they're like, this isn't going to be like, and it's totally cool if all those people were in the shoes. I'm not throwing that out there. I'm not mm. saying this myself. Yeah. It's just like you want to ask why people are upset about, or at least, or at least make jokes. You think that's, that's jokes the, about the panda dunks? It. That's the reason why people make jokes about panda dunks. That's fine. I think people can make jokes. I just, it's the TikTok. Just, I'm just shoe. saying. I you know disagree. what I mean? Like it's, it's the TikTokers. It's the TikTok shoe over like a Jordan one right now. I don't know. I've never it's been on TikTok. Same. In my life. I would say black and white dunks and Jordan ones are like the same vibe. You have to gift a dunk. What are you buying? Yeah, oh man, that is such a hard question. Brazilos. Well, here's here's the thing, and I feel like this is why, and maybe you're making me think about this. I love those Brazilos way more so than good. I need to think about it. And why the Panda Dunk is so popular is because the Dunk I feel like is iconic for coming in such specific colorways. Mm -hmm. Be true to your school. Yeah, where it's like the because you made me think about it for a second, and all the Dunks that I really like. If it's someone who you have to buy a shoe for, meaning someone who doesn't have enough shoes of their own, yeah. you're not going to go out and give them personal favorite out of that whole pack yeah. is UNLVs. Yeah. Uh, shout out Jerry Tarkanian. But is he Armenian? Yes. Love it. Uh, but I don't, you're not going to give someone a gray and red shoe, I don't think, is yeah, like yeah, yeah. the one. So what would you gift? He's not letting you. He's coming close. I'm not going. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not going panda. Okay. Because you don't want someone you care want, about stepping I, out also, in a black and white he, dunk. Here's the thing, I'm though. Totally I want. Thank you, Joe. I've, done it. I've always wanted, at least for the most part, the people in my life who I give things to. Mm -hmm. I want them to be differentiated in some way, where like, maybe they don't know, but it's a little like, not off, but a little. It's not like I have the most obvious shoe. Yeah, a little more like if you know, you know mm -hmm. why this is cool. Even if they're not into sneakers at all. Yes. Okay. Is that fair to say? Like I gifted my dad the 993s mm -hmm. and I got him the army green nice. suede colorway where it's like... Joe's New Balance Outlet? Uh, Joe's New Balance Outlet, yeah. yeah. And you know, it. people are like, not many people would see that, but I posted it online and people are like, oh, snap. Like, yeah. He has those, you know? 
So maybe I guess I, it's so hard to pinpoint down one color of a dunk just because there's so many. And I'm like, which one out of all of these are you going to gift? I feel like he wouldn't be getting a dunk. No, you wouldn't. Maybe, yeah, probably wouldn't be giving a dunk. That's the whole thing. But maybe Kentucky Lowe's. Yeah. I feel a little little more. I was I was shooting today at a store, Stadium Goods. I looked up lot 50 in a size 6. Virgil Off-White Dunks? Give the white lot 50s. Those shoes are so expensive. Well, though. the 50 really? is the black one. No, not so, the, no the one. Sorry, not oh, yeah. lot 50. You like the one. You like the I black, like the one. The black sorry, with the silver up. swoosh? Wow, a lot of money. I might have to bring those out. Not the no, I have the, the like lot eight or oh, those know, remind me of a uh, shout out to Thomas Pynchon. Those remind lot me of uh, maybe? the days where so close. I would say Brendan's most <laughs> I would say Ooh, your most okay. controversial sneaker editorial you've ever done. What? Ooh. He's had a baker's dozen. <laughs> controversial for who? Uh just people who work PR for brands, people in the comment <laughs> oh, section, no. people who work here. I would say it it it. It uh, make sure you catch how flush my face is gonna get when you mention. I would the say story. it it, to, it like how recent it because you you did a you did um a a photo shoot along with it and doing the photo shoot kind of like towed the line of like not like it was like awful but like some people thank may, you it wasn't awful no no no, no but <laughs> I'm just saying some people it. may have been like oh man is that a step too far okay well we've got the preamble tell me what it was. The the Nike um it's not is it decade oh the decade oh no I I don't feel any guilt about that the Nike decade the shoe the that one the that the Heavens cult the gate, cult uh, religious group as they might call well, you themselves you would understand why people might think that's not controversial but you know what I mean like, I don't think that people were upset with that not upset. I thought this was gonna be something so bad oh I just thought it was like a bit controversial using like the because Nike had done a, a shoe based off of that and they had to yeah. cancel it yeah. You know, and doing like I think you had done the shoe with like the um, same purple fabric when the people did the mass suicide. When was this? This was probably six or seven years ago, and of course, several years later, Vice wrote some story about him. You know, like Wait, I did was the this actual fucking Complex? research. In, uh, we, we published it on Soul Collector. Don't forget who wrote these fucking stories first: the sneaker websites, not you. Somebody at NPR. If, no, maybe I don't know. You know, people at the, uh, no, let me not rant about like, it. non sneaker people talking about sneakers. Can I, can I, wow. Can I, but nobody was upset by that. Someone at Vice, everybody was inspired. Someone at Vice had yeah. hit me up last week and I said I wasn't going to say anything about it, but whatever, you should. What, yeah. Someone at Vice was doing, like, I guess they have like a most expensive -ish show or uh -huh. something like that. That was GQ. But the teach, I thought it was the Two Chains show. I guess maybe Two Chains brought it to Vice. I don't know. But they had thought that, like, and I don't know 100%, but I feel like they had thought that sneaker bots were like actual robots. <laughs> And they're like, I've come in contact with someone who owns four of them, and I'm doing the most expensive show. I need to like know more about these things. And they're like, I like I saw you wrote an article about sneaker bots. Can you please like sit down with me and explain this whole phenomenon to me, dude? This is such an insular thing to complain about, but we have we have the space to do it now. That is like one of the funniest things when somebody will come to you and they're not a sneaker person, and they'll be like, Oh, I'm writing about this topic, and I see you wrote this story about it already several years ago. I'm wondering if I could pick your brain and ask you some questions about this thing. And I'm like, all the answers to the questions we already fucking reported on years ago, and now you want to come to this thing and, and ask for my time to tell you more about it. Just go read the story, or better yet, don't publish your shit. The about, craziest you know? one, though, is when you get it from people who are like, I saw you wrote this story in like 2013, and you clicked the link. And it was like you just like aggregating a news story from like. <laughs> oh, it wasn't actually some original. Images reporting. all broken. Yeah, it was like something that like, I don't know, like New York Post had written about like some sneaker mishap yeah, yeah, story. Yeah. And you just like reposted it on the website and they're like, they're, they want to talk to you like you were deep in the mix of the original thing. And you're yeah. like, dude, I was working on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I think some guy from NPR hit me recently Jeez. and. Yeah, maybe this is. <laughs> I don't know. Is this bad to just air these? No, things it's out? funny. But it was funny because they had asked me like they were asking about Joe and Bear, and they were saying, like, "Oh, I just feel like it'd be so, so great to get an interview." You know, I think our audience, referring to the NPR audience, would really love it if we could get an interview. And I was like, "Yeah, I'm not really going to help you with that. Uh, if if I could ever get an interview like that, I would definitely pursue it myself." Wait, and not it. interviewing you, inter getting uh, Ali Oop to interview him? <laughs> yeah, or so, something little, like that. That's a little. You know, th not that they were asking for that directly. I don't know. Some other fuck out everybody who's writing about sneakers that doesn't oh, actually come from this. Some shit. other sneaker. <laughs> no, topics. not really. Not really. Not really. <laughs> some other sneaker topics that I guess that we kind of wanted to like go over. Sure. The one we felt like was a kind of a uh, swing and a miss. Or didn't make much sense mm -hmm. with Donald Glover collaborating with New Balance. This hold on, this was you. You felt this way. This is I a specific you thing. 
Well, for oh, which the, is fine. It's just your, your the record. So to Donald Glover had collaborated with Adidas yes. like a few years ago. Nobody cared. And the shoes just, they were all like white canvas, sort of like distressed shoes. You'd have was, a hard time remembering them now. Nobody cared. Obviously, Donald Glover, huge pop cultural person that yeah, like, makes incredible stuff that matters within the space spheres. no 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 shots at any of the work that he's done outside of sneakers right mm-hmm. but like sometimes brands feel the need to like hey this guy's big we need to do a shoe with him let's do it but like don glover's just like not a sneaker guy and that's totally fine you mm-hmm. know what i mean it's not like, really his fault no it's not not but that he had done he's the adidas the shoes. step out in the panda dunks he had done the adidas shoes and it was just like eh, you know doesn't like didn't really make sense like mm-hmm. on multitude of levels and also the consumer didn't care about it so mm-hmm. it's like the consumer votes on what they're doing and yeah and then new like four years later or whatever new balance is like hey we're gonna try this again too we're gonna mm-hmm. get donald glover and do more distressed sneakers mm-hmm. Um, and I love everyone who's uh, affiliated with the... Have with... you talked to them about yes, it? Yes, I have. <laughs> really? What are I you know saying? he has because he's told this story many times. What are you saying? I was just, Not like, on come, here, I was just like, come on, man. Like, dude, like, you guys... You sent a come on, man text? I would, no, I was like... You, I just said, you guys... <laughs> he, he was mad they gave Donald Glover a spot that could have went to Matt Welton. No, it has nothing to do with he, that. You didn't tap me for another 991? I just said, you guys are doing such, like, great stuff right now mm-hmm. that, like, actually matters within the space. Mm-hmm. And this one feels like you're trying to force it a little bit for something that doesn't really fit, like, the brand profile yeah. or, like... Square sh- peg, round hole. Yeah, the shoes just don't... Aren't good, you know? It's like, it is what it is. Like, the shoes just aren't good. Mm-hmm. And... I don't know. And then two days, like after, or like a week after they dropped the shoes. Your biggest pet peeve. This is your biggest pet peeve. <laughs> it was just funny. This is his biggest pet peeve. It was just funny. And it was like, when they take off one of his biggest pet peeves, mm-hmm. respectfully, he has many, mm-hmm. is when a new deal is announced. They do like, the, they show the shoes, they do like a photo shoot. And then a few days later, the person's wearing a, a different yeah. brand. It signifies to you that that person had. No, no legitimate or lasting collection to the brand that had yeah it was just like and that's fine brand. like we've all like done yeah. sneaker things with brands before where they're not like the end all be all of our fatuation with shoes mm-hmm. but it was just funny that like he had the little new balance ad or whatever and then like out of nowhere i wouldn't even expect this to get posted this is the funny part about mm-hmm. it is like he again was, i this is you're totally i understand you're Frustration at this, but this is all your thing. This okay. wasn't, this wasn't okay, all him. of us being yes. upset about this. This was yeah. only okay. you upset but, about this. I think this. we can all. I think well, I'll, I'll ask you if you think that you were confused as to why a hype blog within our space did a news post on Donald Glover, who was half naked, walking through the streets with a pair of Sockenies on, and felt that was good enough to highlight for a style selection. Yeah, a bit, a bit weird, but it was bit a perplexing, funny, right? Uh, a funny photo, but a bit like I'm not getting involved because you know that we used to do. <laughs> but I don't, com- I don't think Complex, spotted. I don't think Complex. Remember spotted? Would, I don't think yes, but I don't think Complex would ever post. No, I meant sorry. I meant the, the whole being perplexed at or frustrated by the Donald Glover New Balance now Sockenies situation. He's talking about the, the, I'm not that. I'm just. I, I, did you write any spotted posts? Uh, yes, I did. What Those... an era. <laughs> what an era. It's like spotted. Uh, Theophilus London wears Air Jordan 7s. Dakota Fanning in the Nike Air Yeezy 2. What an era. I yeah. The paparazzi I photographer said in the yeah, season. Joe, spotted. Joe, I love Joe, Joe, Joe loved them and also like almost single-handedly like took down like the complex media empire by like posting paparazzi photos. No, <laughs> that's <laughs> not true. <laughs> Joe, is that true? That's not true. How many of those spotted posts are still available on the website? But when the paparazzi spots you using their check. photo without permission, that was when they you might have to that... go back into Mama Lapuma's cookie jar for that one because that shit is not that's cheap. That's a whole different. That's what a whole about different, uh, <laughs> that's a whole different uh, strategy. Different era, yeah. yeah. I think my favorite uh, spotted post ever was um, spotted is what spotted, spotted is and like, it was like uh, you see so and so wearing. It's like spotted. Big Sean is wearing yeah. a Givenchy T shirt cool. with Air Yeezys. It would. It was more sneaker. It started out sneakers though. But mm-hmm. the, yeah, but. It was like Insta- real quick. Yeah. It was like in- an Instagram post of yeah. before Instagram. Yeah, on the website. But I think one of my favorite ones is when uh, Kanye was wearing the Independence Day Air Max Nineties, like throwing like a the paparazzi. Fucking papar- mosquito. Paparazzo in a headlock, and yeah. then they went. They exploded. Yeah, yeah. And I also think if you like even like tweet that photo out, you probably get your like Twitter account locked at this point. <laughs> <laughs> what an era! The rights and clearances specialists about those ones. 
Inf- not anymore. Air Max 90s. <laughs> I Independence remember that. Day red, that shoe, red, blue. Yeah. The blue the the yeah. shit tanked. Yeah, yeah eventually. But then, but then... No, I know, but I'm just saying... Upon wait, did re- it go like this? No, upon release, that shoe was like on yeah, sale at the finish line. Cared. And it went up. All the way up. But then it came back down. No one's going to buy that shoe well, for more the, than a couple the hundred dollars issue, now, right? The biggest issue with that shoe was... Air Max 90 Hyperfuse Independence. There was yes. three colorways, navy, white, and red. Yep. Right. And they had the American flag on the tongue. Yep. I think they went on sale for like seventy nine ninety nine or something like that on finish line. And then Kanye wore the navy pair to knuckle up a... A paparazzo. Yes. And hmm. that shoe, for whatever reason... For like a brief period in time, especially amongst I would say like European tourists, okay, became like the most heavily like bootleg. Yes, you're right. Sneaker. There were a lot of fakes of those. You're right. Yes, you're totally right. And that shoe was going it's like, faded out now, but you're right. The red pair, or whatever, was going for like maybe like twelve hundred dollars or yeah. something like that. But you'd see so many people just wearing fried red like hyperfused uh, Independence Day Air Max nineties and disrespecting streets. this country. <laughs> you know, you fucking come from Switzerland or oh Sweden God. or fucking Belgium or something, and you you enjoy this this home of the free, this land of the brave. And but you put certain, on those joints. There's certain shoes that in fake ass. It's looking, funny sorry. because we had that whole conversation to bring it full circle last week with Arthur Carr. Mm-hmm. You know where people thought that uh, Virgil's wife was wearing the fake off white bread Jordan fours. But I think there's certain sneaker situations where you can like maybe like put a put together enough like clues whether or not like the shoes are real or not uh, this i can't i can't quite articulate it but this comes back to the same thing about the starter kit shoe and i feel like you are going to see the person and decide whether or not they have no the i'm not shoe saying that it's just like appearance. sometimes it's like in people can totally have shoes but like sometimes if there's like something that's like super rare or super expensive yeah you know you see someone wearing like and this doesn't have to be the case but you see someone wearing like uh, maybe like an off-white Chicago or or one or something like mm-hmm. that, and like the shoes are like completely. I mean, not that someone can't like beat them into the ground, but maybe if they're wearing like I don't know, like you have questions, like a pair of Fila track pants with a pair of like off-white. Paint Chica- a picture for us, Chicago. This guy, this Chicago guy. ones. <laughs> like you just maybe you just maybe have some questions on like. Do you do you do you whether someone's those wearing? Questions? No, 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 it's just like. <laughs> You know, no, I know, I know, I know. Whether someone's wearing a five thousand dollar shoe, you yeah. know what I mean? Like it just, it's totally cool to like wear whatever you want. Do it. Go ahead. I Unless don't they're fake. Yeah. Or pandas. <laughs> or pandas. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> it's totally cool nah. to wear anything you want, unless they're pandas, or unless you're Donald Glover. Donald Glover can wear whatever he wants. <laughs> That's on the brand, man. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, can I give a quick update? By the way, speaking of off-white sneakers. Yeah. Yes. Because, hold on, though. Louis hold on. Air Force no, ones? yeah, yes. hold on. I want to talk about that because that's what people came to, to this episode for to hear. Are you getting, like, I know, I know, you know, the yellow text on the other show. Shouts to the other show, Full Sage on the yellow text. But I don't know if you're joking. Are you getting closer? To what? Getting a pair? Of the Louis Vuitton yes. Air Force Ones. You're on the hunt? No. <laughs> you're not? <laughs> Honestly. Because hey, I can't. Honestly, I, I, I'm trying to. <laughs> I you can't know. sift through and I'm like, maybe he is. Honestly, Joe. I was trying to have a positive mental attitude about it and I was trying to push through and I was trying to find my angles mm-hmm. and work it and get in where I could trying and to work the angles you know what I mean and, and stay positive throughout but last week with this fake ass raffle I mean not fake it was a real thing I guess but it were people like the shoe supposedly had sold out within like a minute or something like that was, but people got stuck on like the landing page oh, for it was like, like four hours classic just sitting around on a landing page having no clue what's happening so we're very close to the point, at least with this batch, you know, some people have said maybe there's going to be more releasing in the future, but I might, I might, um, finally be willing to accept my L on the Louis Vuitton. Oh, I thought you were going to say you were willing to finally pony up and like Cooch said, (laughs) Cooch said after the day after he got back from Miami, he just did a video eating, I think a bacon, egg and cheese. And he goes, I'm defeated. (laughs) I'm depleted. (laughs) You know what we can do? We can revisit the question of the shoe you saved up the most money, or that was the first, the first shoe you saved up for. But if we want to ever go to the shoe you saved up the most for, and maybe, uh, three weeks down the line, I will have, uh, 
sent a Zelle payment to PG for twelve thousand dollars. Have period. you well, ever done? That, have you times. ever done that? Have you done that recently? Put money aside and been what like, let's flex. put it in an escrow. What a, what, what a what a mild flex. You're like, you know, I just saved up twelve thousand dollars in three weeks. To Dude, go. I'm not actually gonna do it. That's a total fucking lie. I know, but just the fact that you're like, oh, I just put, you know, I just put four grand aside every week. No, for no, like no, no, three no, no, weeks, no, you know? not at all. I was just making stuff up. Make sure the texts aren't are unlimited. <laughs> That's how I got caught up. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it might cost you a couple of phone bills. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that it, it pains me to say it, but I feel like that the I sun has the, set on that one just about. I saw them for the first time in person today at the Stadium Goods. Yeah. White, also, they're white still. And red, white and blue, white and green, all um, white. We're still waiting to see if this green off white Nike Air Force One materializes. Slime. Yeah. Maybe unconfirmed at the Brooklyn Museum. I don't know. Every every other day, a new where, where are we leaker ranking? I know we had a brief off camera discussion about, about those, this. So where are we panel. ranking that on the pantheon of Virgil's off white Air Force Ones? Just in that section, like just in the museum ones that look like that. Not, with the we're silver not swoosh, talking, Are we just putting the museum everything? Ones. Yeah, just the museum. We're not talking Louis Vuitton. Yeah, like, just the like the whole ones. that whole pack of can shoes we, or whatever. Can we agree that the blue one's the best or no? MCA? I, I think the white one is the best. Oof. So the answer to that is no, Joe. Yeah. Uh, the ComplexCon one? We, yeah, yeah. We put the ComplexCon one in there? Yeah. That whole set of like shoes that are all different colors. Yeah. My I know had... the ComplexCon's just a weird one because the rest are museum ones. and yeah. Same shoes. Yeah, yeah. My friend came up on the ComplexCon one and when I tell you beat them... I feel like people didn't treated it like it was so a this regular. This is the guy Air who wealthy's going to see him walking down Seventh Avenue like and be like, "Those the, are fake." A regular Air Force One and beat them. But yeah, I I put the Momas number one, black okay. and silver, and then I put the blue. I thought and you silver. just said you put the MCAs number one. I just the blue. changed, black and silver, <laughs> blue change. and silver. Wealthy? I do like. I think the white, the white pair, is the best. Like in in hindsight, I do like uh, our our guy Chris Fidal's story. What was his story about? Well, he told it on the podcast. The black and silver ones, right? Yeah, yeah, the the moment ones, like him sliding him. up to the line. Yeah. Did you see he also like had to like, uh, yeah. like some old New York stuff? He had to like yoke someone up basically for stealing a skateboard from his skate shop. I love that. Shouts to Chris. We gotta visit that. Upper West Skates. Yeah, and, and you gotta visit it. If you're listening to this, if you're watching this and you need a, a new deck and you wanna buy it from a native New Yorker. Definitely. A new complete. Did I, is the, is new deck okay to say? Uh you can either get a deck or a complete. They're okay. Two, they're two separate things. I just wanna make sure I say it right. Oh. One thing that uh, I guess mixed emotions <laughs> about on the internet with sneakers, but shout out to our good friend G Rock. I think he had oh, I knew this created is the so, content. I know where this is going. <laughs> this is because of his fucking tweet. I go. So everyone knows that the Gucci gazelles have become a thing, right? Meaning what? No, I, I thought like I thing. knew where this they're was going. They're a great shoe. Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not saying they're. I'm not. I'm I have no qualms. Time with, out though. Time out. Where are we going? Time out. I, I, I know. I Do you know? I I think I have a suspicion here. Mm. You know how you were just saying the fake shoes? You're a little suspicious. I'm a little suspicious too. Let me get this off my chest. Do you tweet <laughs> things right before the podcast? No, I just don't. I don't. To I talk don't. about them I don't. on the podcast. I, 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 I tweeted this thing. <laughs> I did not. Okay, go. I, I, it has nothing to do with. Like, I'm just saying any of that. It's not just a like, bad strategy. No, because it's just like these are the thoughts. Like you asked me, what are my thoughts about sneakers recently? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like. If I'm I just if asking. I have if I make a tweet about shoes, those are like the thoughts that have been kicking around in my head about sneakers for the past like okay, two I'm weeks just or whatever. <laughs> this one was an I, hour. I'm one, sorry, I missed the tweet because it was you an know, hour. I don't be- have to, because not, it was an hour before the podcast. So I anyways, saw it, so I know exactly where he's shout going. Shout out our good friend G Rock. Okay, he had posted Leg- uh, OG legend. He had yep. posted G-Rock. something that the shoe game. He had posted a video that I think Lil Jupiter had since reposted. And it was basically a derivative of if you can't get the Gucci Gazelles, Adidas makes a lot of suede sneakers that you can get in on the trend on now. Right? So and they, it was a really nice gazelle, by okay, the way. Okay, so they post a pair of gazelle blue. indoors, blue suede. Nice one. Okay. White stripes. I gu- watched three seconds of this video, then I... I saw it yesterday. Gumsel. But I just thought it was... Not because it's not a good video. I just got to I just it. thought it was funny that being someone who... For the past like three or four years, like exclusively wore suede. Would, the su- look on Joe's face right now. Suede Adidas. Suede Adidas. Don't paraphrase. And say the tweet. No, you say the tweet. Word. Will you say the tweet? You Want have the tweet up. It? Just say it because it's wait, 100% wait, wait. true. All right, 214. We started recording at what, 245? <laughs> I was I riding the, tra- I was I riding the train while I got the tweet off. Okay, I love it. Everybody you. had things to get off their chest. Got slandered across the internet for three years for wearing corny suede Adidas, and now people are making videos on how to buy GR suede Adidas instead of Gucci Gazelles. Make it make sense. Vindicated. It, dude. 
if I hadn't, like, if people, like, literally hadn't told me for the past. <laughs> not all heroes. No, no, no. Wear suede gazelles. He died for this shit. All I'm just saying is that your mentions weren't full of people saying to you, you don't deserve to be the co-host on a talk show wow. because you wear these shoes. That's right. what people hit me with for, like, the longest effing time that I don't deserve to have a valid opinion on sneakers because I like wearing suede Adidas. Now that the Gucci gazelles are popular, people are hopping in and I'm guessing, and I don't so know, but there's probably this. people out there who want to get in on the Gucci gazelle bandwagon, can't afford it, who probably were like, oh, Wealthy's corny for wearing these style of shoes. Come forth. Show it's, yourselves. It's just like, come on, man. You're gonna try and slander me and then like wanna like wear the same shoes because like someone made a cool version of it? <laughs> I hope we can fucking clear that. <laughs> we're clearing it. We're clearing it. <laughs> Listen, we're Joe's clearing going it. back to his days of ripping the paparazzi photos. Yes, no fucks given for rights we and clearances. Clear he just played the he just played the air horn. Jungle sound. punks, right? Bad. No jungle matter, punks. Jingle, jingle punks. Sorry. <laughs> no jingle matter punks, how much that see? costs, it's worth it. Yeah. Put it in the budget. How's the interactions on the tweet? You got it off your chest, though. I, I don't know. Listen, if you slandered Wealthy for wearing suede Adidas, <laughs> you better fucking apologize, because it's a new day. Oh, I'm checking. All right, <laughs> come on, come on. Hold on, sorry. Any, any spicy mentions for you on that one? Uh, I'm so glad we got here. We were about to get out of here. This yeah. is important. Uh, so far, 90, 98 likes, two quote tweets, nine comments. What, okay. Should we read some of the comments, or do we not want to go that way? Uh, you're braver than me if you're going to read your comments aloud on the air. Oh, you know fashion works three years ahead. This time you was right. Ooh. Ooh. And you know what you get for that. Don't In be selective, internet, though. Internet needs to let Matt live his life, and it's Jamie Kennedy, don't be hating from uh, trends wealthy. It's a trend. And then someone tried to say, it was your ankles. Now show the hidden, <laughs> now show the hidden replies. <laughs> no. All right, he got it off his chest. Listen, you got a, you got a shiny nickel, I guess. Uh, I'm, uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I just want to. No, uh, I'm glad we. The background is important. Yep. Funny I story. knew it though. I knew him. I know him a lot. I knew exactly where he was going. He also brought it to Slack. <laughs> <laughs> multi platform. Listen, all, multi platform. All I'm just going to say is you can't try to go out there and hate on me. I'm not saying you. Uh, yeah, no, no, to no. everyone not out us there, at all, right? You can't try to go out. Everybody except us. Yes. You can't <laughs> go out there and try to hate on me for something and then a few years later do the exact same thing and not. Wow. Expect me to, he knows. He to fucking remember knows. that. Wow. He Puts remembers. Right and come back and say, right I remember mental, those days. Listen, listen. Mental filing cabinet just This dude through. remembers every colorway of the fucking 992 that released in hey. the fourth quarter of 2009. You think he wasn't going to remember your slander from a couple <laughs> fucking years ago? Pepperidge. You are dead ass wrong. You are dead wrong. Pepperidge Farm remembers, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what is that? Like in the cookie jar. That's a meme, right? Oh. Yeah. All right, listen, we got it in here. We got it I don't off. get to get anything off my chest? No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Go off, kidding. <laughs> Non-confrontational, passive-aggressive as always. You, I have you, nothing to you say. You had a moment there around 23 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> right? All yes. right, listen, this has been the Complex Sneakers Podcast. We hope everyone has a great weekend. Please like, subscribe. We will see you next week.